Well, it would be hard to miss it, wouldn't it? We've talked about it on this show, the Heard versus Depp defamation trial. It's been a landmark case in terms of the cultural reaction to domestic abuse claims. I guess it is voyeuristic television has reached a, a, and internet has reached a new level. Um, now, Heard's lawyers rested their counter case last Tuesday and the jury has um, retired or we're now in the hands of a jury in this case and I'm sure the outcome will be keenly weighted by both sides. But there have been claims that should Johnny Depp win the defamation case, this would have a chilling effect on whether or not victims of domestic violence would come forward and make claims. And you can have your own view, I guess, on whether you're Team Johnny or, or Team Amber. But I must admit, I wonder whether or not the circus of two, it would seem to me, people with more money in some cases than sense really has relevance um, in real people's lives. And uh, also because I think this is an issue we should talk about more, we are joined now by Dr. Anne Stewart. She's the Chief Executive of Women's Refuge in New Zealand, the, if you like, preeminent organisation dealing with the immediate effects of domestic violence and abuse. She's worked in this space for over 20 years and she joins us now. And uh, lovely to see you and, and talk with you again. How are you? Kia ora, Sean. I'm good. You're looking well. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It has been a while. And have you, first up, have you been watching Depp the Herd? Has the algorithm on your phone thrown it at you like it's thrown it at everyone else in the world? I think it's certainly thrown it at me. I'm making a concerted effort at the moment to avoid having anything to do with it. I've been, um, I've been really appalled, actually, by the, some of the social media stuff that I've seen that this has generated this you mentioned it in your in your lead up this team amber team dep um it's absolute nonsense it is a total circus you know it's it's some of the things i've been seeing and the thoughts i've been hearing just appall me has it in some ways trivialized the very real and the very confronting issue of domestic violence Trivialised, mm, sensationalised, I think. Um, I think one of the big worries for me is that um, Heard is being, um, they're using her acting abilities to explain how she can be so uh, emotionally affected when she's giving her, her testimony. I haven't heard that said about Johnny. Mm. Um, um, and also, this is two people who live a lifestyle. Well, are there similarities? There's a lot of drug abuse there. There's a lot of dysfunction there. Are there some similarities with, if you like, real world domestic violence and domestic disputes? Oh, of course there are, Sean. You know, when you look at what's being said and the defences that are being used, um, this is just straight out of the the DV 101 textbook. You know, the, I mean, yes, we have people with a lot more money. Yes, we have people who are partying. But, you know, these things play out every day in people, real people's lives. Just they're not in front of cameras and juries. And, and they're not in movies, blockbuster movies, but they still lose no. it. They still fail yeah. to deal with their relationship, to de-escalate. Um, and I suppose in some ways to work out their issues, eh? Yeah, I, I guess that's true. Um, I, I think when we talk about talking, working out issues, though, I think we we run the risk of seeing things as relationship issues. You know, it's a um, they're not relationship issues. There's one person, or sometimes two people, who are using violence mm. against each other. It's it's a far more rooted thing than sitting in the in, in a relationship. This is far broader, I believe. Mm. There is also, I guess, the danger, and some people have written about this, uh, I'm not saying whether I agree with them or not, that a win for Mr Depp in this case would encourage, and what, how do I, I I'm going to coin a phrase, 
domestic abuse deniers um, would say, oh, women are just as bad as men, guys are put upon, don't believe everything you hear. Now, look, I'm sorry, I'm inclined to say that I think there is some validity to this view. It seems to me many people are worried, should Johnny Depp win, suddenly the veracity or the tendency we, or, or our inclination to believe people who come, form, uh, come forward as sufferers, not victims, of domestic violence or abuse, they might be seen as less credible. Hey, one of the things that we, we need to take a wee bit of a step back and look at this particular case and recognise, which seems to have got lost in the, in the whole circus, Amber did not bring this case. Yeah. Johnny bought this case. So there was absolutely no value whatsoever in this for Amber Heard. I mean, she has filed since, of course, but she did not file this case. She has defended this case. Yeah. So I think um, I think we need to bear that in mind. But I don't look as far as I have seen over that twenty years, Sean. Very few women actually make up the sorts of stories yeah. that we're talking about here. Mm. You know, imagine, um, regardless of how much of an actress you are and how famous you are, imagine getting up in a courtroom and having to testify to some of the things that she talked about. Why would you do that? Mm. What benefit is there in doing that? And this is something we see played out in courtrooms around around New Zealand. Well, a lot of people would say seven million dollars reason she would do it, and, and I guess she's had. We've had experts saying she's some sort of bipolar, you know, personality disordered person. Um, I think we could actually say equally um, offer some up, up some diagnoses for uh, um, Mr. Dev. Indeed, Mr. Dev. Dev. yeah. Hear what you you say. know the two. Two possibly um, quite troubled individuals who've mm. decided that one or t'other of them um, have decided that the public really need to know mm. about all of the nasty stuff that may have gone on. Nobody knows what happened there. Yeah. yeah. You know, none of us were actually sitting in a corner of the room yeah. watching, yeah. Yeah. you know. Well, let's... Look, let's leave celebrity pirates oh, yes, of whatever for a moment and, and get back to the work that you've been doing for so long and members of your organisation, mm. the Women's Refuges, do. Um, and I want to talk about this in the context of the fact that we have a recession coming in this country. Um, the cost of living is going through the roof. We are going to have a number of households that slip into negative equity as more interest rates go up and mortgage uh, rates uh, uh, reset. And mm. what little I know about the triggers for domestic violence and domestic dispute, that sounds like a recipe for disaster and a long waiting list at your organisation. Mm. Yeah, we don't have waiting lists, fortunately. Um, we're, we're a little bit worried about this as well. Well, certainly I am. Um, Poverty, all of those sorts of things, the cost of living, they don't cause domestic violence, but they certainly create a lovely incubator uh, for bad things to happen. So, yeah, we're a little bit worried about it. You know, How have volumes been through COVID? What has been the trend? Pretty stable, Sean. We've, mm. we've seen an increase, but not a, not a ginormous increase. It's been... It's been an odd old time, actually. Mm. But we have yeah. these new pressures uh, uh, emerging. Yeah. How are you going for funding? And how can people uh, we're help? Not doing, we're not doing too badly at the moment. The government is recognising or has recognised um, the work we do uh, in a more realistic way over the last couple of years. So that's heartening to see. And we have been very... Um, generously cared for by the New Zealand public. They have um, taken our Gift a Safe Night campaign on in a big way. And um, For those who don't know about that, could, could you just fill our, our listeners and our followers in? 
Um, it's a you go online to gift a safe night, and the um, idea is that you make a twenty dollar donation, which goes towards the gift of a safe night in a refuge. So you're buying a bed for somebody that you don't know, that you'll never meet, and hopefully you'll never need a bed like that. But it's a, a small contribution that people can make, and it seems to have struck a chord with people. Fantastic, fantastic mm. news. Meantime, uh, you're not a Hollywood star or starlet, um, <laughs> but you're in a relationship and one or other of you is taking drugs and someone hits out, what do you do? What is your advice to people who are on the road of that problem? Mm. Walk away initially, walk away and reach out for help. You know, um, whether you're the person using the violence, reach out for help. If you're the person experiencing it, make yourself safe. Leave the house um, and reach out for help yourself. You know, we're out here. We're ready to help people. There are a number of stopping violence services that can offer help and support. If you have used violence or if you think you might be at risk of using violence, there are options for help. It's a matter of people making a choice. Mm. Uh, choice is relative, of course, but in the end, it comes down to choosing to take up that help. So I suppose you will be glad when the jury delivers its verdict, and I don't know, I feel like they should both be told to go home and pull their socks up. Um, but when it's over, I guess that'll be some relief for you, but you've still got... Your members have still got the hard work that they do and the very important yeah. they work, work they do to get on with, eh? Yeah, I think that the sooner the circus is over and done with, the better. Um, and hopefully this will be the the very end of it. We've already seen one court case that, that was messy with these two and now we've got the second one. So, you know, let's wait and see what happens. All right. Hey, Ange, so nice to talk to you again. We must catch up soon, but and thank you very much and for the great work that women's refuges all over the country uh, do. And I